The anime begins with the exams to become a good eater. Then we see a boy step forward and place his hand on a device that will implant in him a bracelet that will fuse with his body in a permanent way and stay with him for the rest of his probably short life. The boy, called Utsugi Lenka, brings hope to the directors of this place and passes the exam. At that, the scene cuts and we see that several Aragami have been detected in the area. After the warning was given, Lenka ran out to help, but a woman held him back and said that he and the boy called Fujiki Kuta really need to train. Lenka even asks why they have to train when the Aragami are attacking them. In response, Lenka proves to be quite skilled and strong, but he dies in this virtual training session, trying to help Kauta after training. Lenka sees that some people have been injured, so he comes back and decides to train even more. During his training session, Kota, seeing Lenka's efforts, decided to take him to Kurotsuki Lika, and she, as a mechanic of these special weapons, prepared Lenka his dink, which in this case is a weapon needed to defeat the Aragami. After that, during one night, an invasion of Aragami took his place in a place full of humans, and now, Lenka asks to be sent to help, but he is ordered to stand by and watch people die. Angry, he says that his greatest desire is to eliminate the Aragami, so he runs off to find his weapon, and after picking it up, he stomps his foot into the monsters along the way. Lenka runs around testing his skills, but don't be surprised, the good eaters really do have some pretty cool body-enhancing powers. The director is told that Lenka has escaped, and because he's such an important specimen, the director, who is also a scientist, has asked some people to be sent so that Lenka doesn't die when he gets there. Lenka sees the stick breaking and the Aragamis enjoying the taste of humans. In addition, some good eaters were trying to help but they were taking a beating, and in Lenka's first exchange of blows, he loses his weapon and ends up being forced to fight with a piece of wood. And in the first opportunity he had, he tried to get his weapon but his death was already obvious. Fortunately, a group of reinforcements arrived to save him, and these guys are from the exploration group, and every move they make results in a dead Aragami out of nowhere. Lenka sees that a girl is going to be killed, so he grabs his gun and runs to help, and as he wasn't going to make it in time, his gun changed due to his desperation and eliminated the Aragami that was going to kill the girl. When the girl saw this, the exploration group, which is more of a support group for everyone, came to the conclusion that Lenka was a new kind of good leader. After doing this, Lenka was attacked because he couldn't get his new weapon back to normal, and he almost went to get blessed, but he was saved in time. After doing this, the woman called Tachibana Sakuya taught him how to use his weapon, and Sakuya left with Lenka to face a gigantic Aragami. During the battle, Sakuya is in a very difficult situation, so the guy goes over there and gives it a one-shot morale boost. However, in doing so, he receives an electric discharge from the monster. After that, Lenka blacked out and woke up imprisoned for having violated the orders of his superior. While he was there, imprisoned a very strong guy went over there and informed him that that big Aragami was eliminated, but one of his companions died in a flashback. We see that after Lenka fainted, the group that arrived to support him got into big trouble, but they were saved by other good leaders arriving at the end. The monster was defeated, but it still had a way of trying to eliminate Lenka. So to save Lenka, Eric got in front of it, took the bite, and died. And obviously, when he found out Lenka was shot for a while afterwards, on another visit from the guy with the Amagote hair, Lenka asked to be taught how to fight and protect people. The scene cuts, and we see that another good eater who was heading in Lenka's direction is being attacked by several flying Aragami. So Lenka's boss ordered his subordinates to go and rescue and escort the girl. As she is also a new type, just like Lenka before leaving, the guy asks Lenka to go with him on this mission, and she agrees to do it. However, she's going to keep an eye on Lenka's movements so that he doesn't try to throw his life away again. Because right, he can't let Eric's death be in vain. After that, we see Lenka and that Rindu guy on a plane on the way to the unknown. Good eater until out of nowhere. They see a ship being chased by thousands of Aragami there. Lenka sees a grotto struggling on its own, and when Rindu gets in touch saying he's come to rescue her, she replies, saying she doesn't need any help and proves to be very skilled at using her new type of ability. Because when she ran out of ammunition, Mission. She devoured an enemy and turned it into energy to continue exchanging fire with him nonetheless. More Aragami begin to appear, and so they have to take this grotto away soon because their orders are to keep her alive. When they arrive at her ship, Lenka goes inside to save the people inside. However, Elisa runs up to him and gives him a leg wrench, and during their fight, the girl lays Lenka down because she didn't want to run away from this ship with him. So when he gets up and opens the ship's door, he sees that the ship is full of people, and that's exactly why Elisa doesn't want to leave leave this ship. When she finds out, Lenka passes the information on to Rindu and tells the guy that he wants to save everyone. And because they have enough ammunition, the guys decide to give Elisa a morale boost by shooting the Aragami until they reach the final objective. Like this, the Eliminate music mission started out of the blue. Sakuya noticed an Aragami evolving, so she warned Lenka and as he was out of bullets, he forced his gun to extend, devouring the monster. And all this in the same way as Elisa did, seeing this leaves Elisa a little shocked, but she asks not to be put in the same category 
story as Lenka. Upon hearing this, our protagonist demonstrates that he is not weak, eliminating a lot of monsters in a very stylish way, showing that even though this anime seems to have a bit of strange animation, it's still very well animated. In response to this, Elisa pulls off some crazy moves that only she, with all her experience, would be able to pull off, and obviously, the two of them have done a great job together. Aragami and relayed the message to the director general and scientist who participated in the creation of the Aragami that Alisa was already on her way safe and sound to their base. However, as life in this anime is never easy, out of nowhere, Sakura identifies an incredibly giant enemy coming towards them, and in order to solve this, B.O., their commander, decides to place the helicopter as a kind of bait for the giant. The colossal Aragami falls for their bait and goes after the helicopter, and Lenka stands there all shocked. After all, he's a god killer. He should be able to kill any Aragami, but apparently he's not. Only understood now that there are things in this world that not even their greatest power will be able to eliminate after that. Lenka and Elisa go to the general director and there the guy forgives Lenka for his acts of insubordination and now even without having trained, Lenka will be part of a squadron. Elisa and Kauta will also be part of the squadron and they will all receive orders from Captain Rindo after the presentation. Kauta calls his new friends to go for a walk and Elisa refuses, but Lenka ends up going. So he ends up getting to know the community, where community where Kauta lives with his mother, there everyone gets food and tries to live a peaceful life during the tour. Kauta went to his house and told his mother that he had become a Gorita and that he was going to fight on the front line. Seeing her like that, Kauta quickly made her leave, saying that she would be fine. Moving on, they came across a place that had been attacked a few days ago. According to Kauta, humanity's current objective is to find a shelter on an island where all humans can shelter without fear of the Aragami. To make this possible, they need to kill several Aragami and collect their cores. We discover that one of Lenka's tasks will be to devour the cores, as only his Jinke can do this easily. Lenka has the opportunity to carry out his first devouring and continuing with the fights. Elisa ends up breaking formation and not fighting as a duo, while poor Kauta wasn't even prepared to fight because the first Aragami that appeared almost made him shit himself. Lenka, on his way, saw an Aragami but didn't chase it, because Sakuya said that he should only eliminate one type of Aragami, and then they took down the Aragami and asked Elisa to consume it. After that day of collecting, our goody ethers headed home, and on the way they came across some humans in need of help. They obviously helped them, but when they got to the organization called Fenrir, the humans weren't allowed in because they didn't pass the compatibility test to get a Jinke. In short, only those who can become goody ethers and have a compatible child can take shelter in the Fenrir base, and unfortunately on that day, Lenka couldn't do anything. And these people ended up being sent away the next day, worried about those people Lenka asked when the shelter on the island would be completed. And in response, the girl who runs the STI, the programmer, the hacker of the place, there said that only 0.6% of the place has been built, and they continue with their tasks. Now the trio of our protagonists are going to take part in a mission with Sakuya as the commander, because Hintu and the other guy there went on a mission together. There, Sakuya asks for a mission to hunt smaller Aragami, but Kota and Lenka ask to go and hunt a big one. In response, they remind him what a big one looks like, but Elisa was also in favor of taking on one of those, so Sakuya agreed, as long as they ran away if the situation became impossible. So during the mission, they managed to eliminate one of those big ones. And when it came time to shoot him, Kuta was shaking, but Sakuya asked him to trust them. But as everything always has to go wrong, a big Aragami runs into a shelter, and out of nowhere, several humans run out at this. Several big Aragami appear, and if that wasn't enough soon afterwards, an Aragami covered in a dark aura appears devouring the big Aragami on seeing it. Elisa was filled with rage and tried to attack him, but her weapon had no effect on him, and she was thrown away immediately afterwards. The mutated Aragami attacked Sakuya, discharging her with an electric shock and then vaporizing the humans who were there, when he saw Lenka get angry and his bracelet joined even more closely to his body. Before he could do anything, Elisa went after the monster trying to catch him alone, but she was totally isolated because the movement of this Aragami is absurd. So when the monster was going to eliminate more humans, Lenka went to him, but he had already received a blow to the stomach. Even so, he does his best to save the people. The monster gets excited and goes after him, and in response, Lenka gives up his body and soul to hold him back. However, the enemy Aragami destroys his weapon and hits him in the back. Soon afterwards, several humans began to be eliminated in front of him, and when Lenka tried to move his destroyed weapon, the monster destroyed it even more. And in the midst of this despair, Sakuya tried to buy time for Lenka to escape, but it was Lenka who was really going, and without knowing what to do, Lenka lay down with Elisa and asked God for help, and when the monster got close to them, the ground crumbled and they all fell together into an abyss to rescue them. The woman who sent them on this mission was trying to think of what to do, because she had no one to send to them down there when Lenka woke up. He did everything he could for Elisa to survive and save her after that. He took her to a shelter and there she took some drugs to hold her over.
over. But her biggest worry was that Lenka hadn't found her jink. And when she thought about going out to look for his gun, Lenka passed out. So she was forced to take care of his body. And when she saw his gun, she was forced to take care of him. When she saw his weapon all destroyed, she could see how hard he must have worked to get away out of nowhere. Elisa began to remember her past, where an origami completely wiped out her family and a small origami appeared. And because he didn't have his weapon, he lost all his strong posture. Luckily, Lenka protected her, but his weapon seemed to be dead. So his only option was to run away. By throwing himself off the building so to give Elisa back her fighting power, they decided to follow the flow of the river in search of her jink. Along the way, they saw dead people dying. People and Elisa was sinking deeper and deeper into her despair. While Lenka was acting normally, thinking only of keeping Elisa alive until the next day, Elisa finally found her. Jink in this, several small aragami appeared and these, that should have been easy. Enemies for the girl were now making her afraid, all this because of her. And even with his gun dead, Lenka kept defending himself from the small aragami until, in the end, he just stayed there to defend himself using his own body. Fortunately, at that moment, Rindu appeared, slashing the small monsters, and then called Lenka's attention for once again, giving up his life so easily in response. Lenka said there was nothing he could do, and I was forced to agree with our protagonist in this scene. The guy was without a gun, half wounded, and with a traumatized girl behind him. It's really tense. After rescuing the two, Randu promised to take them to the meeting point, which isn't one of the best places, but should be safer than where they are now. Rindu himself basically created this place to fulfill his own desires to save people. So, as some Aragams were around, he decided to do a cleaning with Lenka. All this while Lisa was there shaking all over. A while later we see that to keep this place safe, Rindu has created Aragam trees that consume other small Aragams. And for him, this is nothing wrong after all, even their ginkgo made of Aragams. The important thing is to protect the people. To make matters worse, an Aragam passed through the trees, so Rindu ordered Lenka to deal with it. Even without his gun, because if he doesn't, everyone will die. He follows the guy's orders, and when he saves someone, he calls Lisa to help him. But she was already hiding in a cupboard, so to at least escape, Lenka uses a grenade on the Aragam. Him from this place. Lenka thinks hard and comes up with the following plan. Basically, he wants to throw the monster into the dam and open it to send it far away. To accomplish this, he promised to be the bait all this while the normal humans did the rest of the work. Then he puts his plan into action, calling the attention of the Aragame. While everyone gave that moral in the way of humans, then some of them end up getting injured because of the debris of the battle already. The little girl who was helping falls very close to Lenka. Fighting, then using the ampule she brought as planned, he began to make the Aragame retreat. However, this was not enough, so he decided to use these ampules that were used to feed the trees to feed the Aragame. Used to feed the trees to feed his gym. And amazingly enough, this was enough to make his shink come back to life and help him push the monster into the dam. All this so that soon after it was opened and expelled, this Aragame from the shelter of these humans. And in the end, Lenka received Windows praise for having success Succeeded. So continuing with the flashbacks from the past, we see that the scientists found a way to frighten the era games. But this project was closed by the government, and now the director general, who was one of the scientists, must be using. However, this plan must have a flaw, and the flaw is that the Aragami adapt infinitely. After all this, Lenka and Elisa were removed from the combat squad because the guy's weapon needs to be repaired, and Elisa was traumatized. And from what everything is giving window and everyone to understand is that for some reason the strongest Aragami are being attacked to the Far East, which in this case is the place where they are. So to solve the problem of Jim and Lenka, the father of the Aragami, Jim and Elisa, the father of the Aragami. Jim and Lenka, the father of the Jinkis, was called to take a look at his weapon, and the first thing he did was to take a look at Lenka, because normally a Jinky shouldn't suffer as much damage as his did. And when he saw Lenka's compatibility rate with his Jinky, creator of the Jinkies was speechless. Meanwhile, Window went to Sakuya's house to talk to her for a while because he sensed that she was a bit upset about everything that had happened when she was in charge. Sakuya is not to blame for a totally different era game, a very strong monster that had come straight from Russia to appear on his mission. And since life can't stop, Sakuya left the next day for another mission, and Lenka just wished her good luck, because for the time being he couldn't fight during her mission of the place, and since the whole place could collapse with them trying to climb up, Lenka ordered them to look for a way out underground, and this annoyed the leader. But his idea was the best, and she was forced to give that order. They found the underground passage there, all this under Lenka's instructions. They performed a pincer attack, using the tunnel as an advantage for them. After that, everyone returned safely and thanked Lenka. After all, he passed Macau, who saved everyone's life after that. We see the director general telling everyone that he has created a tool that can attract Aragami, and this will be useful for them to be able to defeat more monsters and be able to build that safe place on the island as quickly as possible. And at the same time as he was saying this, Lenka discovered that his weapon broke because his compatibility rate is too high, so his weapon couldn't handle so much power and fell apart. And in the middle of all this happening, Hintu discovered something
something sinister inside the base that the good eaters are to make matters worse because of their compatibility rate. Lenka doesn't have many years left to live. If he doesn't fight, he'll lie for at least three years, but if he does fight, he could die, instantly having his body consumed by the Aragami's cells. In the end, the decision to fight or not is his alone. After that, in a flashback, it is shown that basically the invasion of the Aragami was used as a weapon of war, and only Fenrir avoided being destroyed at the time. After that, we see that Lenka was excluded to participate in a squad in the middle of the battles that will take place, even though he is still without a weapon. He will fight together with Soma-san, and for some reason everyone calls him Shinigami and tells our protagonist to watch his back, because this Soma has a reputation for killing his comrades. After that, when talking to the guy who is going to alter his weapon, Lenka agrees to fight soon after. In a flashback, we see that at the time the Aragami appeared, destroying the whole world, the three scientists who were floating the Aragami tried to create a weapon to deal with them, but the monsters evolved and stopped being affected by the weapons. Be manipulated by a human being, however, they would have to put Aragami cells in the body of humans so that they could control the weapons at the time. One of the scientists decided to be the first human to do this, not only her, but she also involved her son. In this matter after that, we see that Lenka and Soma's mission will be to place one of these stakes around a certain device, and when the mission begins, even the extras reveal that they are afraid of dying. By being close to Soma during their mission, Soma demonstrates his power by devastating some enemies, and well, they complete the mission there and then. But out of nowhere, some Aragami are born and start to break through the barrier they've made. Lenka even asks them to come down and face them, but Soma tells them not to get in his way. So because there are so many enemies, Lenka goes down there and tries to hold them off with his shield. So in the middle of this confusion, Lenka asks Soma to attack him and take the monsters with him. Soma gives that basic hesitation, but Lenka tells the guy that he wasn't born killing the my dear, and yes, he's the fruit for the hope of humanity. And Lenka only said that because he gave some information about Soma's mother, and basically she was one of the scientists at the time. She decided to be the first guinea pig, as I said before, and well, she was a successful guinea pig, but she died and Soma stayed alive, and now Soma is there thanks to her, and well, after hearing what our protagonist said, Soma attacks, however, and Lenka survives, but he passes out soon after. So during the night, Lenka wakes up and Soma asks him why he's going on this mission. Even though he's almost dead, Lenka said that he wanted to help humanity. But according to Soma, humanity can't be helped, because no matter how many Aragami they defeat, they keep being reborn endlessly. So, according to Soma, there's no hope in this world. So Lenka went and told him that he must pass on the hope that his mother had for him to the next generation. Protagonist returned to the barracks, and there he asked for his weapon to be fully repaired, and also asked the guy not to tell anyone about his current condition. So the story went on in a crazy way where Alyssa was being manipulated into attacking Heimdall as if he were her enemy, and the guys are only doing it because he discovered things that shouldn't be discovered the next day. Our protagonist was forced to tear off his bracelet in order to put on another one, all because the scientist created for him a new bracelet, compatible with another jink, this jink being more adapted to the level of compatibility he has when this process started. We go back to Lenka's past, and basically, a long time ago, some people were trying to get into Fenrir, but they were refused because their blood wasn't compatible. When it was time to leave, some people found Lenka thrown in the mud. He was just a poor, abandoned newborn at the time. They abandoned her and took care of him, and at a certain time, his mother and other people were very ill in his shelter, so they went looking for medicine to cure themselves. They found the medicine, but out of nowhere, they were all attacked by the Aragami at the time. Lenka and his sister ran away, and when the two of them were also going to be killed by Aragami, Rindo showed up to save them at the time. He gave some tests to the people at the shelter to see if there were any people who were compatible enough to become good eaters, and as Lenka was adopted, there was a possibility that he was compatible at the time. As Lenka's mother was very ill, she asked for the medicine to be given to Lenka, and as he passed the Fenrir test, being compatible to become a good eater, his life deserved to be saved, and he should be taken to Fenrir. The right thing was after her death. They all went to Fenrir to seek shelter, but they didn't, and time passed. So when Lenka was 15, they made the decision to go to Fenrir. However, out of the blue, their shelter was attacked, and Lenka's father ended up going for good when they were fleeing from the Aragami. Lenka's sister's leg ended up getting all injured, and after that, they kept running away until her injury became something that couldn't be solved anymore, without the right medication. In the end, she told Lenka that she is compatible to be a good eater, and that they didn't go to Fenrir before, because he is adopted soon. They couldn't go in there with him, and as our protagonist didn't want to abandon his sister, she cut her own neck to force Lenka to abandon her and save his life. So, he arrived at Fenrir, and now he's close to his death receiving a new type of weapon now, this time, much more compatible with him. After that, we find out that the first stage of the mission was completed, all because the organization summoned all the good eaters in the world to help. 
In addition, Alyssa came back, seeming to be free of her psychological problems. However, she was acting like a robot soon after. In a meeting with everyone, the general leader sent her brother, who in this case is Hinton, to command everyone there at the advanced base. But the guy asks Lenka to be the leader in his place, at least for a day, and she accepts, saying that their goal is to slaughter at least a thousand large specimens a while later. We saw the guy saying that the enemy who killed Alyssa's parents is probably going to be in the middle of everything, so they're going to have to eliminate him in the process. At the end of that night, Lenka went to his friend's house, and that night, several things happened, like Sakuya saying that she wants to protect Hinton and me in his place, since this battle is going to be tense, I'd take advantage of that night to act like. And even that night, we see that Lenka has matured a lot in a short space of time, so the next day, the mission began with all the long-range weapon users firing the first shot into the air, which came together in the air and knocked out several large Aragoms. When Lenka gave the order for everyone to start fighting, they went downstairs, and in the same way that Lenka did before, they injected this yellow liquid into their dinkies so that their weapons would be in pure frenese, and apparently, this discovery happened thanks to Lenka's recklessness during the battle out of nowhere. The big enemies sensed something and started moving in a single direction, and on the way to where they are going, and there is the dam of those people that Hinton helps, and they are about to put a stop to it. Hinton asked to do a reconnaissance in an attempt to find out where these Aragoms are going. His sister allows him, so he leaves and sees the Aragoms entering that forest out of nowhere. The director says he's going to start something, and after he says this, we see the Aragoms heading towards Hinton, and as our protagonist is the only one who can go and help Hinton, the guy's sister goes over and tells Lenka to go and do it, and when Lenka left, his gun was ready at the same moment to get there quickly. Lenka took off in a helicopter towards Hinton, and while he was doing this, the guy was endlessly massating the monsters that were trying to get through the forest and arriving at the human camp, Lenka saw the guy fighting. Since our protagonist still didn't have his gun, the blacksmith went over there and decided to throw his gun in his direction, and after she threw the gun, Lenka jumped out of the helicopter in mid-air and grabbed his new gun. Power in action left Hinton impressed with the guy's jink then to the misfortune of our main characters out of nowhere. That era game with dark energy appears, and the beast is so mad that our era games even made way for him to pass to start the battle. Hinton tries to blind the era game, but he protects himself by summoning wings. Then they press this era game, and by feeling the strength of the enemies, he stops attacking them and starts to run towards the humans who are nearby, and somehow, by passing through the trees, this era game managed to control them, leaving the lives of our main characters even more complicated, and when the shit was going to happen, the reinforcements appear to give that morale against this absurdly strong era game. Then while they were fighting the programmer and hacker of the crazy systems discovered that who changed the route of the era games, that in this case is a crazy Russian there. So at the moment when Lisa was going to fight, the Russian guy speaks into her headset, making her go crazy and try to attack Hinton fortunately. At that moment, she remembered Hinton's words of help and fought against the manipulation. However, she fails and makes the whole group disorganized and everyone there is in a desperate situation. Lisa was the only one free, so Olinga started yelling at her asking why she became a good eater besides that he called her strong and ordered her to stop. Being such a beast, his words reached the girl and she acted shooting the Aragami Travoso, and that was all it took for everyone to let go and return to the game. However, Hinton asks everyone to go save the people from the dam, and Len Cavalera explains to everyone everything that Hinton has done for some people now. Hinton wants to fight alone against this absurdly strong era game while they find a way to turn off the stop that is attracting the era games to the dam. Even though they don't want to do it, everyone leaves and Hinton stands firm in the battle against the intelligent era game, but his strength is obviously no match for his enemies, so he manages to take the monster by surprise with a light grenade hidden in the ground, and when Hinton hits the monster, his gun isn't enough to defeat the enemy, so he turns on his gun saw mode, and after that we just see the blood rolling, and after some flashbacks about the director's past, General, we see the Aragami Trioso appearing near our main, characters with his mouth full of Hinton's blood, everyone is very sad, and Soma is already going to fight, while Elenka tries to calm everyone down saying that they still don't know what really happened, everyone starts to get desperate, and even though Lenka tries to keep order, it doesn't work, and just as Lenka was running out of things to do, those humans he helped before show up saying they're going to help again. When he sees them, Lenka resumes his stance and asks Soma to help him face the strongest era game. Not just him, but Lenka gathers everyone together and tells them that Hinton's last orders were to protect the people who live in this reservoir. So in a way, that reminded everyone of Hinton Lenka says that they will be able to defeat this enemy together, at least by talking to the humans. There they have discovered the location of the device that is attracting the Aragami's attention. So while Soma was looking for the device to destroy Lenka, and Elisa began to confront the trio Aragami in the water of the reservoir. Soma found the device and destroyed it. The Aragami 
army began to move in another direction. However, the Dark One continued to fight against Lenka and Elisa, and now that most of the enemies were gone, they all gathered to face the Dark Aragami together and during this insane battle it was possible to confirm that this Aragami has superhuman intelligence and during the battle, Sakuya and Kuta used a technique to contain the problematic rays of this enemy, then Lenka, taking advantage of the crack that Hinton had created in this era game, attacked him at the same point. However, the beast was strong enough to throw Lenka backwards and break his weapon angry at having lost a full bar of his body. Because of Lenka's attack, the Aragame began to make his rays even stronger, surpassing the technique of containing the rays that had been used against him. Lenka tries to use his broken weapon to attack him, but he ends up being brutally attacked again. And after being hit, Lenka continues to crawl with his body degrading. And seeing him like this, everyone began to make an effort to try and defeat this monster, but he was too insaboado, and so he dodged and defeated everyone. So when the Aragon began to laugh at everyone being defeated, Lenka got up with his body all screwed up, and now his weapon was using the very piece of this enemy Aragon that they were facing as a kind of blade. And using this blade, he manages to get through the skin of this monster right away. He shreds the paws of this enemy, but he attacks Lenka with his tail on that. Lenka jumps, he goes down, giving everything while his body corrodes to hit a fatal blow on the magic stone of this era game in the end, he says that the good eaters are the hope of humanity. After that, it was shown that that Russian guy in real only manipulated Lisa into defeating Hendaway on the orders of the Director General. After all, Hendaway had discovered his biggest secret, which in this case is to launch a ship into space so that humans can stay up there in space, waiting for the end of the world to happen and the end of the world predicted by the Director General and another scientist is that the Aragami will unite becoming one and devouring everything that remains so that in the end they will cease to exist and the planet will go back to the way it was before then. After everything has happened, the humans who are in space will be able to return and make planet Earth thrive with humanity again. To make matters worse, the Director General intends to start this end-of-the-world apocalypse himself. After all, there's no point in simply waiting for this apocalypse to happen, but he's only going to be able to save around a thousand people on this arc to space, and the Russian guy, for helping him, wants to be one of those people and while the Director General had this idea, the other scientist was believing that the Aragami would evolve until they could communicate with human beings, and so peace would return one day. In the end, the General Director passed on the message saying that the Good Eaters had achieved a goal in the fight by defeating countless Aragami, and he also declared mourning on behalf of those who died in battle in the end. Somehow, Lenka lived on, and he became the captain of the bravest team in the anime. So the Good Eater anime ends, and it will never have another season.